Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This was written for us by a good friend of the channel, Dave Morish. Dave has his own channel, Save Dex Gaming. They've just hit 1,000 subscribers over there. I'll stick a link to his channel in a top in comment. Please do go and have a look. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword was originally released on the Wii in 2011. It launched on Zelda's 25th anniversary and brought with it full motion controls, making use of the Wii Motion Plus attachment. Like with Wind Waker and Twilight Princess on the Wii U, Nintendo have released a HD remaster 10 years after the original, this time of course for the Nintendo Switch. So does this game soar to great heights or land face first? Well, let's find out. As you would expect, you play as Link, who is training at the Knight Academy on the floating island of Skyloft, and he has a close friendship with Zelda. When disaster strikes and Zelda goes missing, it's up to Link to search for her. During his journey, you discover the surface, a whole world below the clouds. Now, I won't say any more than this, but the story certainly kept me engaged and was helped mainly by a very likeable cast of characters. Structurally, this game follows the traditional pre-Breath of the Wild Zelda formula. This task you with finding your way to a dungeon, usually in a set order, solving the puzzles to navigate it, finding a new item, and that item is used to progress through the dungeon and expose the boss's weak spot. The path to the next dungeon will then become available, either through story beats or the item being used to open new paths, rinse and repeat. There is an element of exploration to these games, but nowhere near as much as in Breath of the Wild, for example, and it could be argued that Skyward Sword is the most linear game in the series. This isn't necessarily a bad thing and does bring its advantages, the biggest of which is that it allows for a heavy focus on the story, and it has, in my opinion, the best story in the series. As I mentioned briefly in the intro, the original forced you to use motion controls, which led to it developing a bit of a divisive reputation. I personally liked the motion controls and thought they worked really well, but I did wish they were optional, and luckily this remake has brought that to fruition. You can play it with button controls, including the Pro Controller or in handheld mode. When using motion controls, you use the Joy-Con separately, swinging the right Joy-Con swings Link's sword, and he will copy the angle you swing at. The game was built around this mechanic and there are plenty of times, including puzzles and battles, where it really does matter the direction you swing. Whilst I find with this remake, as well as the original, that it does work fine, there are times that when you are under pressure to swing correctly and promptly, it was easy to misjudge your swing. With button controls, however, the sword is assigned to the right stick, and I found myself making fewer mistakes this way. When using those motion controls though, you do use the motion for most things, even when it doesn't really feel necessary. Buttons are used for interactions or bringing up menus, and the left stick is used for movement. But throwing bombs, steering the loft wing as you fly, piloting the beetle item, even navigating some menus needs to be done with motion. I always found it a shame that I couldn't just use the stick to steer things, I must say. When using button controls, everything is done in a much more traditional, and dare I say, comfortable way. Also new to this game is the ability to freely move the camera with the right stick, and since the right stick is used for the sword movement when using button configurations, you need to hold down the L button first to temporarily assign the right stick to camera. This took me a while to get used to, and I would have preferred to hold a button down to bring up my sword, but eventually it did become second nature. When using motion controls, the right stick always moves the camera. You can also use the gyro for fine tuning your aiming when using button controls. With both control schemes though, ZL is used to target and the B button is for sprinting. If you hold your sword aloft, then it charges for you to unleash a skyward strike and if you jab the Joy-Con forward, you do a jab with the sword. I must say that I did find these two moves in particular quite inconsistent. The overall design of the world is segmented. You have four main areas in the game and they aren't interconnected. The main hub area is the sky where your hometown is floating on an island and jumping off the side will let you call your loft wing to fly around. When you unlock an area, you can jump through the gap in the clouds to access it and it seems like a free roaming area and it is to an extent but you are always nudged in a certain direction. There will be characters to interact with, puzzles to solve and enemies to fight, all as you make your way to that next dungeon. The dungeons in Zelda games are made up of rooms that you typically fight or solve your way through, finding items such as keys and backtracking your way through to find the boss door. The dungeons themselves are fantastic and make good use of the game's mechanics, and there are some interesting items in this game. You do get your typical Zelda tropes, your bombs, arrows, hookshot, etc., but there are some quite unique ones, the beetle in particular making for some fun level designs. 
I have always enjoyed navigating dungeons in Zelda games and this game was no different. The linear nature of each area meant that the outside parts felt a bit like dungeons in and of themselves, although still fun to play, it does take away from the feeling of a living world that other Zelda games have achieved. The main thing I didn't like about the original, especially on repeat playthroughs, was your companion Fee, who is a spirit that resides in your sword. She would constantly interrupt the gameplay to pop up and explain something to you in just a bit too much detail. Thankfully this has been streamlined here, giving you the option to skip tutorials for one thing, and I found her to be less intrusive in general this time round. Gameplay may not be the best a Zelda game has ever produced, but it's still a lot of fun. It may lack the exploration of other Zeldas and feel a bit disjointed, but with some of the best dungeons in the series, fun items to use, and a fantastic story, it really does push the gameplay forward, and it scores 16 out of 20. The motion controls, although they work well, can be annoying when they're forced on you, but the added button controls do alleviate this issue, and they work well too, outside of the teething problems with the camera. Control scores 17 out of 20. The Zelda series has seen plenty of different art styles over the years, making each era of the franchise stand out. This game is no exception. It adopts a cell shaded look, which I liked on the Wii and it really does shine in HD. It looks like a living painting, with a lighter colour scheme than the Zelda console game that preceded it, Twilight Princess, and it really is a thing of beauty. One thing I noticed in the Wii version was that anything far away would look quite blurry, but the HD makeover this game has received has definitely eliminated that and the world surrounding you looks nice and crisp. The frame rate has also been upgraded, going from 30 frames up to 60 frames per second on the Switch and I had no issues at all with performance. The characters are all very well designed and despite the lack of voice acting you get a feel for their characters through their expressions and actions. They are very memorable, even the side characters you might only meet once, and it helps to make the world feel alive. There is an orchestrated soundtrack too and it really is a joy to listen to. The main theme feels grand and epic. The music when you are flying through the skies has a more jovial tone to it, whilst also conveying a feeling of adventure, and the darker moments of the story are greeted by appropriately sinister tones. At a glance the game may not look like much of an upgrade, it certainly doesn't show as big a difference as Wind Waker's remake did for example, but that doesn't stop it from looking absolutely fantastic and visuals get 18 out of 20. Audio is delightful as always seems to be the case with this particular series and it also scores 18 out of 20. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword costs £49.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. For this you are getting a sizeable adventure that can take over 30 hours to beat on a first playthrough. The issue comes with the fact though that it is a remaster of a 10 year old game and although it does look the part on the Switch, has there really been enough implemented for people to double dip? This all comes down to the individual I guess, for newcomers to the series who haven't owned this game before or don't own a Wii, then I would say yes it's worth the price, but if you have your copy still or you have a Wii U where you can download it for about £18 on the virtual console, then the improvements don't really justify the price of this Switch version. To be fair, the fact that button controls have been added will make this more accessible for people that disliked the motion controls of the original, and there have been other quality of life improvements too, as I mentioned earlier. I must say though that I do feel the practice of releasing an amiibo that has a fast travel option locked behind it does disappoint me. I appreciate it isn't essential by any means to the game, but it does feel like a quality of life feature that should have been in the game as standard. That aside though, value is a tricky one to score, as it is different for everyone, but on balance it scores 14 out of 20. To conclude, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD is a fun action adventure game with fantastic visuals, a breathtaking soundtrack, interesting dungeons and an amazing story. The addition of button controls is very welcome, although the motion controls do work well too, and this is the most accessible the game has ever been. It does have its shortcomings with its linear design not being for everyone, and there isn't enough new content for returning veterans, but it was a genuine pleasure to revisit for me and experience that story again, all the more with that more comfortable playstyle. It might not do enough to make all people that have played it before feel like this, but if you are a newcomer to this game, then you are in for a great adventure. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD gets a switch up score of 83%. So there you have it, a big thank you again to Dave Morris for writing this one for us, please do check out his channel, link is in the top pinned comment. Thank you to all of you that have been asking about my whereabouts in the last few weeks, 
I have just had some bits that I needed to sort out, but I do appreciate the concern in the comments section very much. I am back now and it's very nice to be back. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming. Okay.